this is a question I'm seeing all the time now in my coaching is, hey, I went to do a jaw surgery. I got talked out of Marpy, even though nasal breathing was one of my primary complaints. They told me that the surgery would fix it, uh, that Marpy was just going to make a mess of things. It was going to add time and cost and, and complicate the orthodontics and that I should just trust the MMA. And they do the MMA and they have this whole new sort of lower third. It's their, their, their tongue base is, is, is great. Mm-hmm. Um, but their nasal breathing is right where it was before surgery. Yep. And that's a tough place to be it, it is. because Marpy is way easier to do before surgery, or even if it's a matter of just planning in a segmental Lafort uh, by doing SFOT on the lower before surgery. Uh, it's just one of those things that has to be carefully sequenced. I am a huge, huge proponent of Marpy first always. And we were talking about that um I think a surgeon would say otherwise, which is why I think patients are getting talked out of it. But it's it's the most stable way to develop the ma- the the maxilla because um, it, it it's going to be solid. Where when you're doing it with a three piece, let's say you set it wherever you set it, you're going to lose some of the bone. So if you really need a centimeter of expand of transverse development, you're going to get a centimeter with the Marpy and you hold your, you know, you, we, we leave the Marpy in for a good six to eight months, depending. Um, so that bone is not going anywhere. And s- I truly think it should be an always as the first step. Um, and, and do you say that applies to patients that specifically present with distinctly poor nasal breathing? Absolutely. Absolutely. But the other thing to consider is, um, is the nasal breathing, is it, anatomical or is it inflammatory right because we can have inflamed nasal passages from like the environment like i was just just describing moving to washington and then all of a sudden i have inflammation in my nasal passages um or is it a really tiny is it really tiny like if you look at my nose here that's my nose ring um uh so when we look at the nose you can see this is an almond shape And then when you look at the skull, and I don't know if mine's in focus because I can't see myself, but we should really have a wider base. So it should look more like a pear or a triangle. I think if we look at skulls from, you know, pre-industrial, that's that's the shape that we Mm -hmm. should have. So if you look at me, I am super almond right here, and I'm still almondish here. And when I look at my post Marpy um, noses, they're they're shaped much more like a triangle. So you can really see the widened base. Um, yeah. And I, I haven't seen any three piece before and after CBCT, so I don't know what it would look like. But uh, if we can optimize the nose first, it makes and and I have talked about this with Dr. Alfie. A three piece is a much more complicated surgery. So pre pre and during surgery, yep. it's com- it's more complicated. So why would you not do a Marpy? Like it makes no sense. Oh, you're yeah yeah. My point was that uh, yeah. My point was that um, it complicates pre surgical orthodontics. It adds time. It oh, brings in I SFOT. See. But your point was more a, a, a multi piece maxilla surgery is just more cutting, more plating, more that can go wrong at the scariest highest risk point of treatment, Correct. which is also a great point. Correct. Because truly, if you do the Marpy and transverse is taken care of, all you're doing is correcting, you know, AP and vertical. You're, you're eliminating yeah. the complicate, well, minimi- minimizing the complications. So. Yeah. And it should be said that Marpy obviously brings its own risks and complications around asymmetry and around often being unesthetic. <laughs> You know, for people that don't have uh, an arch length deficiency, sometimes they end up with too much bone for not enough teeth or like a more square looking arch, mm-hmm. which it's like a kind of a, a white wall when they smile, which is also not great. But these are the, um, you know, that can be mitigated by just not over expanding yep. or finding that balance between nasal breathing improvement and aesthetic sort of backtracking. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, but I think... With Marpy technology now, it's it's a lot easier to get a symmetric expansion 
And there's more information now for sort of self-advocating to make sure you don't get overexpanded or overexpanded into an asymmetry. That's another huge thing that I do in my coaching is I monitor expansions with people yeah. because the orthodontists just don't always have time to meet with someone once a week, step back, zoom out, mm -hmm. look at their face, offer an opinion as to how they're looking mm -hmm. overall, not just how things are looking in the black hole. Yep. Um, I do a lot of that and I try to help people find that sweet spot. And it tends to be less. I don't, I don't see a lot of one centimeter expansions that I love. 